just go forth. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for standing in reverence of the reading of God's Word. And so you just saw a video called the Via Della Rosa. How many has ever heard this song before? Knows anything about the song? It's a beautiful song. But when you begin to think about the Via Della Rosa, it's a numbered trail that winds through the old city of Jerusalem. It marks locations of significant moments during Jesus' journey bearing the cross he was crucified on. Could you imagine him carrying that cross for you and I on that road? But during that journey, that peregrination that he is on, I am totally convinced that this trail, the Via Della Rosa, that trail that Jesus was carrying the cross on for you and I, I am convinced that this was Satan's worst nightmare. And I want to explain myself here in a few moments. Because, see, Satan thought he had laid out a path for Jesus to follow, um, that he was headed to his demise, that Jesus was going to ultimately die, but it did not turn out the way that Satan had hoped it would turn out. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah, one of the incredible prophets, especially concerning the life of Jesus Christ, Isaiah 53 and verse 4 it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But look at verse 5. It says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. How many can say, I'm healed because of the blood of Jesus Christ? Verse 6 continues, and it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It says in verse 7, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And then verse 8, He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who all and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut out or cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the right rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. And so when I look at this prophetic words from the book of Isaiah that has already been fulfilled, this Via Della Rosa did not end at the cross. It did not end there. In fact, in my opinion, the Via Della Rosa, that road that we just witnessed Jesus walking on was the beginning. And I want you to know this morning that you're here by design. This is a beginning, a fresh start for your life. When I was praying for this service last night and this morning, the Holy Spirit continued to, to minister to me about people who would be here this morning who would feel hopeless, who would feel like there's not much of a future, who had misdirection in their life and needed to know and needed confirmation that God is still in control of their life. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you're facing. But it's not over until God says it over. The devil is a liar. He has, God still has good plans for you. His promises are yea and amen. Don't give in to defeat this morning. Just know that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And what he promised, it will come to pass. Now is not the time to give up. Now is not the time to quit. Now is not the time to lay over and say, why bother? I'm not even interested anymore. The devil cannot win this. The word said, give no place to to the devil. Listen to me this morning. Uh, don't let that foot that that uh, that foothold become a stronghold in your life. Uh, just say, "Oh, you know what? Uh, I'm here today uh, and I'm just trusting in the Lord that he's going to work it all out." And I'm going to tell you something. It may not look like it, but if you will keep pressing through and keep trusting in Jesus Christ, uh, he is going to take you on your road, on your Via Della Rosa road, and he's going to show and prove to you that he is 
is God. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against you, he shall condemn. I hear the Holy Spirit say, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I hear the Holy Spirit say this morning, if God can be for us, who can be against us? Listen, the devil will throw everything your way, but you have a God that is greater, that is more powerful, that is all-knowing. All he's looking for is somebody to trust him, somebody to praise him, somebody to say thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. Somebody give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. In the book of Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1, or excuse me, verse 2, the word of God says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angels answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. Look at verse 6. He is not here. Someone shout, He is not here. For he is risen. Shout, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes forth before you into Galilee, and there shall be, ye shall see him, lo, I told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet, and worshipped him, and then said Jesus unto him, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren, that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And so, this is biblical proof that Satan's worst nightmare became a reality that day, that Jesus is alive and well. What happened that day was the greatest thing that could have ever happened to all humanity. A paradigm shift of redemption. A paradigm shift of restoration. A paradigm shift of revival. These four significant things occurred at the end of this Via Della Rosa. And so I want you to see this. This is so interesting and so amazing. In the book of Matthew 27 and verse 50, it says, Jesus, when he cried out again with a loud voice. He yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. In other words, it was writ in, ripped in two pieces. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and, <laughs> and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And so the very first significant thing, Brother Jeff Peters, that took place was there was blood blood that was shed. How many is thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ? How many in here can say, I'm thankful for the power of the blood of Jesus? Every time I get in a vehicle, I always confess and profess and declare the blood of Jesus to protect us. Hey, listen, they had mall shootings last night, but I'm still pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of terrible things that's going on in society, in our world, but there's something that they cannot touch, and that is the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? In John 19 and verse 34, it said, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And so the blood and the water flowing is significant because it illustrates the forgiveness of sin by the washing of the word and the spirit, and it illustrates the Lord's Passover, which we also know as Pesach. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 18, it says, Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated with Without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God has enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission. What does that mean? 
it means that the blood had to be applied. The blood is what gives forgiveness. Oh, hear me today. We need the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to be washed and cleansed through his blood. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26, it says that he might sanctify or set apart and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish and so we need the blood and we need the water and that's what happened that day when they pierced Jesus with a spear on his side blood and water flowed and then in the book of Exodus oh I love this sister Rachel Miller brother Billy Miller I love this Exodus 12 and 13 it says and the blood shall be upon you as a token upon the houses where you are and when I see the blood somebody look at him and say when I see the blood when I see with the blood that's what Passover is all about Passover is about the blood on the doorpost for the Hebrew children and when the blood was seen he says I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt I don't know about you but the woke mentality the bale spirit that is going on in this nation is none other than an Egyptian spirit that is trying to choke the church but if we will just get brother Kevin if we will just get the blood of Jesus if we'll just put it on the doorpost of our lives and say God cover me with the blood then I believe the Lord is saying I see the blood I see the blood at 415 East Sycamore I see the blood at 400 Holly I see the blood on Ash Street I see the blood on your in, in the communities like Blyville and the communities like Armorail and in out in the country around Steele I see the blood in Gosnell I see the blood in Osceola I see the blood in Mississippi County do we got any believers in here who believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ number two the next significant thing that had to happen was that Jesus died Matthew 27 and verse 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. The, je- the death of Jesus is significant because it illustrates the day death died. And it illustrates the, illustrates the feast of the unleavened bread. The feast of unleavened bread illustrates the need to get sin out of our lives. We die daily. And it illustrates... The, the importance of the, of, of the only way that you and I can accomplish getting sin out of our lives is through Jesus Christ. We are saved <laughs> through the grace of God, right? <laughs> we're saved not by works, <laughs> but we're saved through the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ. <laughs> it is the redemptive covenant. And the only way that would ever happen is if our Savior had to die, and he did. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. None of this is possible without the death of Jesus. He had to die. And we talked about this next, number three, is that the veil was torn. Matthew 27 and verse 51, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And so when you consider the veil of the temple tearing into two pieces, it is significant, but what it does, it illustrates that humanity has permanent access to God through the Jesus' sacrifice. Before Jesus had died, it took through the law of Moses for people to come through the high priest and ask forgiveness through man and ask forgiveness through a high priest through the priesthood, and they would do it once a year on the Day of Atonement. They would go into the most holy of holies and sprinkle blood upon a mercy seat for the sins of the people. But Jesus decided, hey, or the Father decided, there's a better way. There's a much better way. And so when Jesus died, and this is interesting, when Jesus was on the cross, many people don't know this, but there was this little platform that was given to people who died 
died on the cross during the Roman times. And it was a little piece of wood that was nailed about midway uh, through between the legs and the torso of a person. And they called that little place the mercy seat. The reason it was called a mercy seat is as Jesus or whoever was being crucified would hang on a cross, they could actually sit down just for a little bit just to get their breath. And so let me tell you, the high priest thousands upon thousands of years ago sprinkled blood upon a real mercy seat right there where the Ark of the Covenant was. But then 2,000 years later, there was another blood that was spilled upon a mercy seat that fell on Calvary's ground. Aren't you grateful today for what Christ has done for you and I? That veil was rent in two, giving us permanent access. Now you, Pastor Jamie, myself, whoever wants to can come to the throne boldly and approach the throne of grace and boldly approach for mercy, boldly approach for grace and say, God, I need you. We don't have to depend on a high priest anymore. All you have to do is come running to these altars and say, God, cleanse me, forgive me, restore me, redeem me. I need you. Hallelujah. Someone give the Lord a good hand clap. Number four, the graves were opened. Sister Charlotte, I believe this is a reality, will be a reality coming soon. I believe, as the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Thessalonians, that the dead in Christ will rise first. I pastored for a couple of years in West Plains, Missouri, and our parsonage was right across the street from a cemetery. And I used to tell the congregation there at Trinity Worship Center, I said, I'll be out there and I'd walk that cemetery and I'd pray. And I said, I'm just expecting one of these days that those graves were going to open. And then all of a sudden, one spring day, a tornado came through. I'll never forget this. Lo and behold, one of the sirens were right at the edge of that cemetery next to our home. And I'll never forget, as that siren began to go off, I thought for sure that was the trumpets. I thought for sure that was a rapture. I went to the window and looked for those graves to open. But it's going to be a reality. Those graves are going to open. And the only way that graves can open is if we have somebody with a key that can open up those graves and he is the key holder he's the master of all keys he went to death hell and a grave for you and I he gathered up the souls that had died before us and he installed the very first soul train that the world had ever known and he marched them all the way out of paradise into the place of heaven and defeated death hell and a grave that's who we're serving today a God that has resurrection power I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. He told Mary, he said, look, he told Martha, he said, look, I am the resurrection and the life. We don't have to walk around in Blyville anymore with our head down, weak and defeated. No, yet same self spirit that raised Jesus up, according to Romans 8, also lives in you. You have resurrection power. Someone shout power. My, oh, my, in the book of Matthew 27, verse 52, it says, And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. This grave's opening is significant because it illustrates the resurrection power, but it also illustrates the feast of first fruits. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 3 and 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable to his death. When you look at the, the feast of first fruits, what it illustrates is the believer's bright future because Jesus is returning for his bride. Think about that. The plan of Satan was to strategically coordinate through the working of these Pharisees. The plan of Satan was to strategically coordinate through the workings of Judas, a disciple, of Pilate, of Herod, to even use the crowd against 
Jesus. They cried out, crucify us. Release Bar uh, Barabbas, but crucify Jesus. Uh, that plan was a foothold. That plan was nothing but a foothold in the life of Jesus. Uh, it was orchestrated at a foothold. However, uh, Satan uh, failed to remember something. He failed to remember the greatest prophecy ever written, and eventually it was fulfilled in the Bible. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, here it is, the greatest prophecy. It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Satan thought his foothold on Jesus would become a stronghold, but Jesus put Satan under his feet. Uh, the day Jesus rose again was the day that Jesus uh, halted Satan's stronghold. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, uh, we don't realize uh, what took place, uh, but it took place. Uh, it is a fact. Uh, it's a historical fact uh, that he went to the cross and died, uh, but it is our faith uh, that Jesus died for you and I that we might have eternal life. Uh, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You're here this morning and you feel hopeless. The devil's a liar. You feel like there's no way out. You're trapped. You can't get through. The devil's a liar. Don't give place to the devil. That is nothing but a foothold. And if you keep entertaining those thoughts like I'm going to never make it, thoughts of negativism, thoughts that are saying I'm bound and I'll never see a change, that is is giving the enemy a stronghold but you got to tear the strongholds down you got to break the strongholds down you got to trust in the God's word I've been under this uh, this diagnosis uh, of this dizziness uh, since February of last year but I'm still declaring uh, that God has healed my body I'm not giving the devil a foothold I'm not turning this into a stronghold yeah I can lay in a bed and be bed fast and never get up but I choose to live I choose to live. I choose to preach. I choose to shout. I choose to go to my daughter's birthday parties. I choose to go to graduations. I choose today because I made my mind up. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Does somebody know what I'm talking about this morning? If that's you, let's get to our feet and let's give God a praise. Let's give God a shout. Let's give God a hallelujah because he's been so good to us. Can somebody praise him for a few moments? Hallelujah. Glory. Shout glory. My God is a good God. High five three people and tell them, I'm overcoming. I'm overcoming. Come on, Ramsey. Come on, guys. I'm overcoming. To high five three people and tell them, I'm overcoming through the blood of the Lamb and the word of my tongue. Oh, yeah. I'm overcoming. Enough's enough. I've had a good, I've had a, I have a good God that's going to give me the strength to carry on. Someone shout, carry on. Hallelujah. Hold up there. There's a spirit of depression and a spirit of suicide that's running rampant in our nation. It is, listen, there's so much anxiety that is happening in our young people. That's happening in our world today. Um, media giants like TikTok and Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, all of those, YouTube, it's not helping much. It's actually hurting our youth, the minds of our youth. We need this stronghold destroyed. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds, uh, casting every, uh, every imagination, every high thing that it comes against the minds of Christ. Uh, listen, we've got to believe in the word of God. We've got to, listen, I was thinking about that this morning uh, when Satan came and tempted 
Jesus. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We've got to train a generation. We've got to train a young people to speak the word of God. That this book of the law shall not depart of my mouth, but I shall meditate therein day and night, that I may observe to do according to all that's written therein. Then shall my ways be made prosperous, and then I shall have good success. Oh, hear me this morning. It's going to take some prayer and some fasting. And it's going to take some fight. Do we got some fighters in here? Do you want me, who am I talking to? If you're a fighter, raise your hand. Listen, are you done with it? All the junk that's going on, the, the nonsense that is going on in our government, the nonsense that's going on in Hollywood, the cesspool of this mass media. Are you done with it? I'm through with it. I mean, there's times I just want to take that television and just throw it out the window. Listen, we cannot allow those footholds to become strongholds. We've got to tear them down. I'm not going to preach it, but I'm going to tell you real quick, these are the things that God said. The, the footholds of anger, the footholds of jealousy and envy, the footholds of fear and insecurity, the footholds of lust and pride, the footholds of rebellion, all of those can turn into strongholds if you allow them. But he said, give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. Listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're facing, but I want you to know from this preacher, this Cheyenne Arapaho from Concho, Oklahoma, I want you to know this morning that God is bigger than your problem. God is greater than what you're facing. It's a financial. God owns it all. If it's a healing, he's already, he's already sent his son Jesus that we may have healing. Is it sin? Jesus is the perpetuation of our sins. He's the redeemer, the forgiver of our sins. Whatever it is, if it's hard heartache, there's healing. If it's confusion, there's understanding. If you're blind spiritually, I tell you, you can be on a road to, to Damascus, but Jesus can give you the brightest light and understanding that you could ever have. Just know today that we serve an awesome God. Someone shout hallelujah. I want you to bow your heads and your hearts with us. We're going to ask our musicians and our, and our ministry team to get ready and to, to, I want them to minister to us this morning in this song that is so beautiful and so wonderful. And you're here this morning and you're facing some difficult times. There's some attachments to your life that has the propensity to become a stronghold. Amen. Let God be in control. Amen. Let God be in control. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Give him to the Lord. Let God be God in this place. You're here this morning under the sound of my voice and you're away from God. You know what I mean by being away from God. You're not reading, you're not praying, you're not believing, discouraged, and you need to come home. You need God to just remind you that you are loved. You are forgiven, but you just want to have that confidence today. It would be a pleasure to introduce you again to Christ. He went to the cross for you and I that we may have eternal life. He loves you. I was uh, in prayer a few days ago, just praying for a specific situation specific person and a thought came to me they probably think they're too far gone as I was praying for this this people these these people 
this person, this family, they probably think they're too far gone. Listen, you're not too far gone. His hand is not short where he cannot reach. His ear is not heavy where he cannot hear. He loves you. And he wants the best for you. For all of us. We've all made mistakes. We're a, we're a church full of chaos. We all come here with problems. We're not perfect. There's no perfect person, but we serve a perfect God. And because of his grace and mercy, we can become that word perfect, which means whole. If that's you this morning with a head bowed and your eyes closed, I'm not going to have you come up front. I'm not going to isolate you. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to say, pray for me, Pastor Jason. Will you raise your hand high and say, pray for me. I see your hands, all hands, all in this room. Hands all in this room. He loves us. Father, thank you for the, the courage of people today that are honest, full of integrity. I pray your blessings on their life. They'll never be the same from this moment. From April 9th, 2023, they'll know. They'll know this is a milestone in their life. They will never be the same again. Their lives will be truly changed. If you're discouraged this morning, I want to pray with you. If somebody's here and you're discouraged, don't have to tell me what it's about, but you're discouraged, I want you to come this morning. I want to pray with you, whoever you are. I know what it is to be discouraged. It's not, it's not fun. But I want to encourage you. Would you come this morning? Just come as they begin to sing.